Hey all, welcome back to One Seed, One World. So today we're gonna to go over another uh, type of weed or wild plant that may show up in your yard or garden from year to year, especially, especially if you live in North America. This plant here is indigenous to North America. And what is it? It's pokeweed. Today we'll go over five quick things about pokeweed. All right, so number one, as I mentioned, this plant is indigenous to North America. I think it's probably more along the eastern part of the United States uh, and ranges probably to maybe mid. I don't know if you guys that live out on the west coast may see this as much. Um, it is a perennial plant or weed that comes up and it starts off in the spring with tiny shoots that then can grow into quite a large plant. This is kind of a bush at this point, and I even have had some that I haven't kept up with that can also get as big as small trees. The plant itself is toxic for the most part. Uh, it has many toxic properties, and the more it matures, the more toxic it kind of gets. The most toxic part of the plant is the taproot, which can get quite large as the plant matures. And then the toxicity kind of uh, maybe decreases as it spreads out. Um, although, and I'll show you some close-ups of the plant, but the, uh, as the stems get more of a red color, they get to be more toxic. When they are young green shoots, they are much less toxic. And the berries can be toxic too. They can make you sick. Uh, so if you have small kids, you know, make sure that they don't go start grabbing them and eating them because they do look kind of delicious, but you definitely wouldn't want to eat them. Number two. Now, I did mention that it's a toxic plant. Uh, however, when the shoots are young, many people will eat the young shoots in the early spring. Uh, it, it's been called poke salad or poke salad. Uh, and that's eating the young green shoots. Uh, and however, to eat them requires quite a bit of preparation to ensure that you don't get ill. The process involves boiling the greens and then draining off all the water, boiling them again, draining that water. And I think in a lot of cases, they boiled them a third time uh, before they would then consume them. I personally wouldn't recommend eating them there are plenty of other kinds of wild edibles out there, things like purslane or burdock, uh, you know, that you can get some wild greens that have plenty of nutrients in them um, where you might not have to, um, you know, go for a plant where you have to worry about getting sick from it if you don't cook it right. Although back uh, like in the 17 or 1800s, there was a writer, I don't remember his name, but he had written some things about the poke plant or the pokeweed and said that it was a good substitute for asparagus. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and not go with his advice though. But I'm sure that some of you out there, especially uh, I think it's been popular like in the Appalachia area, that probably eat poke salad every spring and there's probably plenty of you out there that have a, a grandmother that has a specific recipe that they made for it. So you do what uh, you're comfortable with and what you're familiar with, but I would not recommend eating it for me personally. Number three, the berries from the pokeweed, or it's also called ink berry, because you can make ink from the berries. Now, there is a legend that says that the Constitution of the United States was originally signed using pokeberry ink. While pokeberry ink kind of has the same color and whatnot, uh, it this legend is incorrect. Uh, according to the National Archives, the Constitution of the United States was signed in iron gall ink. Iron gall ink is made from iron salts and from tannins from various different plants. Uh, and it was a popular ink recipe that was used from about the fifth century all the way up into the 1900s. And you can even still buy iron gall ink uh, like on Amazon, if you want to go old school and get yourself a, a quill and uh, dip it in an inkwell.
But you could also make your own ink out of pokeberry uh, or the berries from the pokeweed. Um, there is some documentation that even though it wasn't used on the Constitution of the United States, that during the Civil War in the United States, back in, you know, the 1860s, that many soldiers during the Civil War would use pokeberry ink to pen their letters home. You can also use the berries uh, as, uh, to make a dye from. People will dye uh, like their yarn, cotton, uh, flax fibers, that kind of thing, with pokeberry juices. And there's plenty of um, YouTube videos out there on how to do that. It's something that I would like to try sometime. The one thing is though, is going back to the toxicity thing is, the juice from the berries can be absorbed through your skin. So if you are working with the berries of the pokeweed, you will want to wear gloves when you're making your ink or your dye. Number four, uh, a lot of the Native Americans did use this plant for various other things. They use it for medicinal purposes. Uh, they use it to induce vomiting. Um, to induce diarrhea, to cleanse the body, probably because, you know, <laughs> this can make you sick and can cause vomiting and diarrhea, uh, but it was used as a clen cleansing mechanism. Uh, they used it also for um, making like salves, for curing itches and that kind of thing. I'm not really sure what the process was, if it was the leaves or the berries or how they did that. Um, and then they would also use the juice from the berries to make um, inks and stuff that they would paint their uh, horses with, like for war paint and for other different uh, religious rituals. And number five, uh, one great thing about this plant is that it's uh, fantastic for wildlife. Migratory birds especially, uh, you know, all your mix of songbirds and whatnot, this is a source of food for them while they are on their migratory path and probably even throughout different parts of the year. A lot of birds like to eat the berries. The one problem you run into is that the birds eat the berries and then when they poop, they're spreading the seeds all around through their poop and then the plant spreads. This plant is uh, considered uh, invasive in many areas. I consider it invasive in my yard because it spreads very rapidly, uh, grows pretty fast, and as I mentioned, as it gets bigger, it gets that big tap root that sometimes can be like that big around or even larger and goes way down deep in the ground. They're very hard to get rid of. You'd have to dig a pretty sizable hole to get rid of the tap root. If you leave any parts of the tap root in the ground, it will put off more shoots and continue to come back since it's a perennial plant. So they are a pain. You have to get rid of them when they are young, but if you let them grow and let the berries come out, the birds, in your local neighborhood will probably appreciate your contribution. So there's always that. So I guess that's it really about pokeberry. Uh, just like, I guess that last night is, is as they come in, the berries are like, or they put off white flowers first and then those white flowers will turn into a small white berry that will then turn green and then will become these pretty purplish black colored berries that are quite, um, quite full throughout the plant in most cases, especially if they're in a place with a lot of sun. Um, so I don't have any video to show you of the white berries because we are much later in the season here. You know, we're in, in going into October starting tomorrow. So most of these plants are fully matured. I do have a few green ones I can show you uh, just to give you an idea of what they look like. Hey, but whatever's going on in your neck of the woods, in your gardens, greenhouses, backyards, farms, farmettes, whatever it is, um, maybe you'll run across some pokeberry. If you've used pokeberry, either for like a poke salad, if you eat it, or if you've used the berries for dyes and inks, let me know uh, what you did and how it worked for you, or are you one that's uh, more like me that just struggles with trying to get rid of it out of all of your flower beds every year. Um, so feel free to put a comment below. Always appreciate getting information from all of you YouTubers out there and uh, learning from you guys and getting your input. But thanks for hanging out again with me today. 
and I uh, hope that you are having a fantastic day and that everything is working out great at your homestead. We will see you again soon, and uh, that's it. Namaste.